At the end of our last episode, we failed to get through the shallow pass at Atatutaki and chose to head off towards Palmerston Island. We had a lovely sail that lasted about one and a half days and got us to arrive just after sunrise. When you're arriving at Palmerston Island, you're supposed to radio in about an hour ahead of time, and then you're assigned a host. Ed Marsters was our assigned host, and he came out to help us pick up our mooring, which is just outside the reef. Palmerston Island is one of a number of sandy islets on a continuous ring of coral reef enclosing a lagoon. The reef is some seven miles across and covers an area of 22 square miles. Palmerston was recorded by Captain Cook in 1774, but he did not land on the island until the 13th of April, 1777. He found it uninhabited, though some ancient graves were discovered. He then named it after Henry Temple, the second Viscount of Palmerston. Palmerston Island is quite unique in that it was first settled by William Marsters in 1863 and his two wives. He soon added a third wife and sired 23 children. So now with a population of around 60 and with the exclusion of the school teacher and the nurse, everyone on the island is a descendant of William Marsters. He split the island up into three sections, one for each wife, which is now headed up by Bob, Arthur, and Ed Masters, and Ed is the official policeman. This is Ed's place. This is Simon. Say hello, Simon. Hello, Mike. <laughs> nice day. Nice day. Before we landed, most of the inhabitants went off to Rarotonga for the Heva. So there was only about 10 people while we were there. We found the people of Palmerston Island extremely hospitable. For the next three days, our routine would be that Ed would come out in his skiff and pick us up at around nine o'clock and take us through the very winding, treacherous pass through the reef. And we'd walk around, snorkel in the lagoon, and they'd always cooked us a hot uh, lunch. And every time we walked by one of the other families, it was always, hey, come over have a cup of tea and some cakes and let's have a chat. Beach on Palmerston Island. <laughs> then at the end of the day, Ed was take us back to the boat. We do a bit of fishing, drink some beer, listen to Ed play the ukulele and watch the sunset. <laughs> Yeah, so what in doubt is a 
like it when once you run side sideways you start well you got the you got the, the whole thing <laughs> Okay, so Ed singing isn't the best, but then I can't talk. Snorkeling in the lagoon was always fun and full of life. The summer night has just begun. The moon is bright, let's have some fun. Oh, this is everything. With you right next to me. So alive and tonight. There was two other boats at Palmerston whilst we were there, and we made some really good friendships. There was David and Chiz from SB Platina and Travis and Marta from SB Marion. We later caught up with them in Tonga and again in New Caledonia. Then I had the honor of helping load SB Platina onto a ship to transport back to the States from Australia. On the 23rd of July, we dropped our mooring and set sail for Beverage Reef. Beverage Reef is a circular reef approximately 8 miles long by 2 miles wide that barely sits above sea level at low tide. This seclusion ended up being one of the very highlights of our Pacific cruise. But that is a story for our next episode. The next day, the wind dropped and we needed to motor sail. Everyone was getting hot, so we decided to stop and go for a swim. To the newbie, a mid-ocean swim is always an eerie feeling. Just knowing that you're swimming in water that is two and a half kilometers deep and a couple hundred miles from the nearest land can be off-putting. But once you are in, swimming in the purest deep blue water is a fantastic experience. In the very early hours of the next day, the wind shifted to the southeast and picked up and we were screaming towards Beverage Reef on a close reach. 
perfectly set up for a 12 o'clock arrival.